Just welcome everybody to Kingdom Awakening Church. This is the word portion of our service. And so just want to say welcome to everyone on Zoom. We are so thankful to have you here. Welcome to everyone that's on Facebook or or YouTube or wherever you may be watching this replay at. Amen. And so um, just wanted to say welcome to you. Happy Sunday to everybody. Um, we're so glad that you all chose to join us today. Amen. And so let me just get this out really quickly on my page and then I'm going to go ahead and get started with how I feel God wants me. Um, just what he put on my heart to share with you all today. Amen. God bless you. Good to see your face. Amen. It's always good to see faces on Zoom. Amen. Praise God. And so, um, today I feel like God just wanted me to, to talk to you guys about, um, where our, where does your agreement lie? Where our agreements lie? It's so important, um, that we understand that we are in a time where uh, I feel like the word that God used was demarcation and demarcation is the action of fixing the boundary of, uh, fixing the boundary or limit of something, a dividing line. And so I feel like God is drawing a dividing line over his people. Amen. He is clearly, um, drawing a line on his people. The remnant is arising in this hour and it's, it, it's so key that we understand, uh, what's going on. The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they had an anointing to understand the signs of the times. And so we, in this day and time, we need the Issachar anointing so we can understand what's going on around us. And so God is literally marking his people in this hour. And so it's so important that we understand. I want to start with, uh, reading first John, 2 18 and 19 and um so first john 2 18 and 19 reads i'm in a new king james version little children it is the last hour and as you have heard that the antichrist is coming even now many antichrists have come by which we know that is the last hour they went out from us but they were not of us for if they had been of us they would have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Amen. And so it's so important that we understand this message, you know, <laughs> the way God gave it to me, he said, it's a call to the remnant to come out from among them. Amen. And so when I say come out from among them, I'm talking about in our agreement, there are people that have come out from the church, meaning they know how to do church, but they are not of God. Matthew seven also speaks of these people. When Jesus said, everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will not enter in the kingdom of heaven. And they're going to say, but I prophesied in your name, but I cast out devils in your name, but I've done wonderful works in your name. And he's going to say, away from me. I never knew you, you who work lawlessness. We have to understand that these are church people. These are not people of the world. These are the people who, in, uh, they're talking about in John, first John, um, First John 2, when he said, listen, they left from among us, but they weren't among us. Like these people, uh, they know church. They know, they know the word of God. The Bible says that they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God. But here's the thing. We've been so intermixed. God said, let the wheat grow with the tear. He said, when the time comes, he said, I will, I will harvest my harvest. Amen. And so this is the time where God is harvesting his harvest. This is a call to the remnant to come out from among them. See, here's the thing. These are the people when it was the time of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that they decided they were going to bow anyway. Amen. And so, um, and so it's so important that, that we understand that these people, they look like us, they talk like us, they know Christian lingo, they know how to do church, they know Christian language, they know all this stuff, but they are not of us. They do not know God. They call on God, they prophesy, they cast out those, they do wonderful works in the name of God, but they are not of us, amen? The Bible says by their fruit, we will know them. Amen. It's so important that we understand that we have to have a spirit of discernment in this hour, that we have to be able to discern what is the authentic oil of the Holy Spirit and what is a fruit of another spirit. It's so important that we understand uh, our agreements. The agreement is so important on earth. God said if any two or three gather, he said if any two agree on anything on earth, he said that they will have it. And when the Tower of Babel was being, was being built, he said, listen, the people have come into to one agreement one accord. He said, if they stay in agreement, they're going to be able to build anything. God said, come out from among them. Come out. What are you agreeing with that God doesn't agree with? Listen, in this day and time, 
We have to agree with God. We have to come into agreement with God says we have to like what God likes and hate what God hates. We can love people. We can honor people, but we have to love what God loves and hate what God hates. Our agreements have to be with God over people. Our loyalty has to be more with God than with man. It's so important that we understand that because God is calling the remnant out from among them, out from among these churches where it, it said it in 1 John 2, they came from us, but they are not of us. Amen. They know church, but they're not of us. Matthew 7 says they prophesy, they cast out devils. They do marvelous works in the name of Jesus, but they're not of us because the fruit that they bear are not the fruit of the spirit. Here's the thing. We are accountable for what we allow people to sow in our spirit. It's our responsibility to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that we can discern when people are sowing things in our spirit that are not of God. The, the fruit of the spirit are evident. Love, joy, peace, right? Patience, goodness, uh, kindness, uh, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. Amen. And so we have to understand if anyone is sowing anything in you, uh, that is not, that is not evidence of one of those that is not come, being produced from one of those. We have to reject it. We can love the person, but reject the bad fruit. And here's the thing. It's no one else's responsibility, but our own. We always tell people in our ministry, if we give you a prophetic word, you go weigh it with the father. You go pray about it. Listen, False prophets will tell you, you take my word. You take the word of the prophecy. The devil is a liar. The Holy Spirit, he said there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you in all truth. God is, de is demarcation. He's marking his people. He's drawing a clear line. There's one church and one shepherd. That's Jesus. If the, if the pastor, the fivefold minister does not point you to Jesus, he is false. Now we just read this. They've gone out from among us. They've gone through ministry school. They know how to do church. They know how to walk the part looked apart but they are not declaring the lively word of the lord they are not operating by the spirit of the living god god gave us the spirit and the way that we know his fruit amen the way that um it is yeah the way that i'm sorry <laughs> the way that we know um we know the spirit of god is by the fruit that it bears we can listen to people and that's the thing we, we can love people because we're supposed to love people amen but we can't receive bad fruit some areas we might have it all right others we might have it all wrong and we can love a person but not receive their fruit and it's so important that we understand that wrong agreements produce sin sin is missing the mark wrong agreements produce unrighteousness right right agreements produce the righteousness of god right standing the fruit of the kingdom joy peace and righteousness these are the fruits of the kingdom these are the things that we should we should be producing and our agreements will affect that one way or the other and here's the thing there's such a lie that's out right now that everybody can't hear from god we are literally hardwired to hear from god we were created to hear from god everything in us was 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 made to hear from god we had to stop believing the, the lie and the thing the sad thing is so many people we crave the leadership of Moses. The people, they did not want to talk to God because they were fearful. And they said, if God talks directly to us, we're going to die. So let God talk to Moses, let Moses talk to us. And they craved that leadership. And so God gave them what they wanted. And here's the thing. There are so many people, they, 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 they want to live free. They want to live the abundant life, but they're craving the wrong things. And uh, Psalm 78 29 and 30, it said that he, God, the, the people were complaining about the food. And so he gave them, he gave them the meat and he gave them their field till they were sick and to their destruction. The Bible said that he gave them what they craved, what they desired. That's a dangerous place to be when God will give you what you crave because you refuse to come into agreement with him. And so you complain and ask for, uh, constantly ask for other things. And even, even when they asked for a king, uh, the children of Israel asked for a king. He said, listen, he said, the king is going to um, abuse you. Basically, he's going to take your children. He's going to make them a slave. He's going to do this and that. They were like, give us a king, give us a king. He gave them what they craved. We don't want to be in that place where God begins to give us what we crave. But what we crave is not in agreement with God. We have to examine ourselves. We have to watch our own motives, our own desires. I'm going to read the scripture today. And um, it, it, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow, but it is what it is. So I'm going to read. Um, first, I'll read 1 Timothy 1 and 2. It's a little easier. And then I'll read the second scripture. 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in later times, uh, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. When we crave the wrong things, we begin to get our conscience seared like a hot iron. I'm going to read Romans 1. 
and I'm going to read 18 down to 32. It's a long read, but it, it, it's a purpose because God was showing me how he is, he is drawing a line between his people so that it can be clearly seen who is his and who is not his. Because there are so many that left out from among us that look like us, that talk like us, that prophesy, cast out devils, and, and they do marvelous works in the name of Jesus, but they are not of God. And so it's clear uh, by what we stand for. We were given armor so that we can stand. This is a call to the remnant to come out from among them, among the things that you agree with them about, and to stand in this day and this hour. Amen? So... Uh, Romans 1, starting with 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like, like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts. He gave them what they craved. Listen, y'all, this is, this is it, it's, it's, so, it's so sobering when God was giving me this message. So he gave them what they craved to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing that which is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debase, a reprobate mind, to do things which that are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evilness, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Uh, who knowing the right judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them this is what God was showing me it's not only not okay that these people do this but those who approve those that do it our agreements what have we come into agreement with that God does not agree with we can love people and not agree with what they do we our loyalty has to lie with God over anything else this is God said listen where does your agreement lie amen we it is the remnant is mixed in inside of any house there are many many things there are there are vessels of honor vessels of dishonor there's silver there's gold there's clay there's rubble right there's hay there's all kind of stuff so inside of these churches there are those that went out from among us but are not of us there are those of matthew 7 that say lord lord that can prophesy can cast out devils and do marvelous things but they are not of us amen it all comes down to he said Heaven is for those who do the will of my Father. We have to agree with God. It's time to come out of agreement with hell, death, and the grave. Come out of agreement with what the things that God is not in agreement with. If God doesn't agree, neither do we. This has to be our attitude. We can't be afraid of rejection. We can't be afraid of retaliation. At the end of the day, we're already dead. We died with Christ. We are, we, we, we're dead. We were, the spirit of God is what lives in us. Amen. We sit in heavenly places. Our attitude has to be of that of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, oh, king. He said, there's no need to argue with this because even if our God doesn't save us, we won't bow. See, we were given armor for a reason. God said, stand. He's, he gave us everything we needed so we could stand. It's time for the remnant to take a stand. Amen. It's time for us to self-examine ourselves. The Bible says that judgment starts in the house of God. But he also says that if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. We have to examine our heart, examine our motive, examine 
what we crave so that we won't crave the wrong things because when we begin to crave the wrong things, our, our, our conscience begins to become seared. And it is not a good place to be in a place where you are no, your conscience is seared and you're no longer getting the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's a dangerous place to be, a very dangerous place to be because then you won't come into repentance. The Bible says there's, no, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ of Jesus, amen? Because blessed is the man whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Listen, we're going to trust in somebody. Everybody's going to trust in somebody. It's either going to be God, the devil, or ourselves. God is the most reliable <laughs> out of those three. There really is no other besides God and the devil or our own reason, our own self, our own wisdom. We can trust our own mind, but God is more reliable. It's so important that we understand that our agreements are important. Our agreements produce stuff. It's so interesting that we were doing intercession and worship. And the thing that my husband kept talking about, kept praying about was agreement. And I said, okay, God, like now he's just confirming, like we have to pay attention to what we are agreeing to. Agreements are so important. Agreements literally are like covenants. You know what we, and, and here's the thing. I just read this in Romans 8, people, you know, People don't like to touch this topic. You know what I mean? I'd rather not, but it, but woe to me if I don't speak what God is saying to wake his people up. Amen. We're in an hour where those who went out from among us, they're knowing the people to sleep. You understand what I'm saying? They're, they're speaking these messages that are not awakening the people. They're not awakening the remnant to awaken to the spirit of the living God. Sometimes we wonder why certain things in our lives aren't working right. It's because of the agreements that we come into agreement with. See, the people who did these things weren't just guilty, but those who approved of them were are also guilty some of us are approving things that god does not approve and we have to change our minds we have to come out from among them amen we can't just talk to talk and have a form of godliness but deny the power of god we have to tell people the truth listen if you've fallen in one of these areas if you've fallen into, into one of these sicknesses listen salvation promises you deliverance amen it's not okay love is not love there's deliverance for you that's the mercy that's the love we have to speak the truth there's healing there's deliverance for your soul amen there is a way there is hope but it's not that we agree it's not that we approve because we love what god loves and we hate what god hates amen we have to understand that we can still love people we can love our children we can love our friends but we can't approve what they do because when we do that we begin to disqualify ourselves from from guarding our heart you have to guard your heart so that it doesn't become seared so then you won't be then after a while you won't get convicted of the things that you should be convicted of when the holy spirit is grieved we should be grieved amen it's so important we don't want to be like samson where he looked up he was so used to doing what he was doing he didn't even realize when the spirit of god left him you know paul said to the galatians oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you where what you started in the spirit you thought you could finish in the flesh see all of us came into the kingdom through the spirit through faith amen and every promise it has to come through the spirit and through faith it can't come through our flesh it can't come with being um politically correct with everyone we can be loving and kind but we may not always be able to be politically correct you can be diplomatic and nice but you may not always have to be able to agree with everyone and you have to be okay with that you have to let every man be, be a liar and let god be telling the truth you have your loyalty our loyalty needs to be with God above everything else. See, we are citizens of this kingdom. This world is in our home. We're just passing through this world. This, our allegiance, the Pledge of Allegiance should be to God first and everyone else second. And it, and here's the thing. If we really, we as, as Christians, we have to begin to know our Bible, study our word, and stay in the word so that we can recognize these people who are who uh, appear to be moving by the Spirit. Amen. They appear to be moving by the Spirit of God because they're casting out devils, they're prophesying, and they're doing wonderful works, and they're calling on the name of the Lord, but they don't have the fruits of the Spirit. It's so important that we understand gifts are giving, but the fruit of the spirit is grown. The kingdom is a vineyard. Listen, when you see these people with these ministries popping up and then all of a sudden they're, they're like huge and big numbers. Listen, some stuff, and I'm not talking down about anybody else, but it's so important to understand that the kingdom's a vineyard and things are grown. And if you know anything about a vineyard, anything about a garden, it's seasons, it's timing. You have to water it. You have to tend to it. Amen. The kingdom isn't a microwavable thing. If you see people with microwavable thing, the enemy is always trying to mimic and he can't get the authentic anointing, but he's always trying to mimic. You have to remember that we are living in the last days. Antichrist spirits have gone out. It, they, this is what they say about, uh, they say, if you put a frog in and boil in water, 
he'll hop out. But if you put a frog in warm water and then you just keep turning the temperature up a little bit, a little bit, he won't leave out because the temperature is moving up too slow. Before long, he's boiled. See, what happens is we don't discern the fruit of these people. We get into these ministries, we get into these places, and then we get locked in. And before we know it, we're locked in. And you don't know you're locked in while you're in until you get out. <laughs> when you get out, you're like, whoa, what was that? Right? But while you're in, because you didn't discern it from the beginning, you didn't listen to the voice of the Spirit. Because if we follow, this, this is the one thing that I know. I was following the Spirit of God before I even understood a lot of stuff he was saying. When I first came to God, I can remember the Spirit of God leading me into different places, different things. And people would be like, well, why are you doing that? I couldn't explain why I was doing it, but I knew I was doing it by way of the Spirit of God, right? People, even where I moved and everything, like, why, why are you doing it? I'm like, because I know this is where he sent me. I don't know why. I don't know for what, but this is what I know, right? So, but here's the thing. My father taught me the importance of having a relationship with God. When God came to me, it was it, like, it, it was, I, I was seeking for him. You know, like in my spirit, I felt like there has to be more. And so he showed himself. And what people don't understand is, in the church, unfortunately, the key to knowledge has been stolen. The enemy has stolen it from a lot of people. There is a simplicity in Christ that has been stolen. People are teaching doctrine. They're teaching you have to go up these steps and do this and that. Listen, there's a simplicity in Christ. We're hardwired to hear God. All we have to do is tap into how he's talking to us. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, the veil was ripped because God wanted access with you and I. From the days even the children of Israel, God always wanted to talk directly to his people. But those people craved a different kind of leadership. They craved the leadership of men. They said, let Moses talk to us. They said, give us a king. God said, but I wanted to be your father. I wanted to lead you. God has always wanted to talk directly to us. But too many people are craving. They want to, oh, I would rather spend time with my pastor. I'd rather spend time with my five-fold minister. And then you get disappointed because we all came from flesh. We're all going back, back to flesh. All has sin and come short of the glory of God. We will all fall short. We all have character flaws. Then we get disgruntled because we didn't lean on God. We didn't trust God. We craved the wrong things. And when God gave us what we craved, then we were disgusted. Just like the children of Israel in Psalm 78. They, they, they ate until they were sick. Just like in Romans 1. God is giving people over to what they craved. Listen. We thank God there's a bar of soap for her, us. As long as we have breath in our lungs, we can get it right. There's repentance. God said he's faithful and he's just to forgive us if we confess our sins. Not only forgive us, but cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Listen, y'all. We it, Seriously, we need to take out some time this week and examine our hearts, what we've come into agreement with that God is not in agreement with, and repent, renounce it, and come out from among them. Amen? And be separate, be holy. He said, be holy because I'm holy. I'm sorry, I, I, what I'm about to say is not rude, but holy is not a little dolly you wear on your head or a long dress. Holiness it is set apart for God's use, consecrated, amen? It's a heart matter, amen? Hallowed, holy is me to, to be set apart for God's use so that God can use you, cleansing yourself. Sanctification is a process. Like I said, the kingdom is a vineyard. Stuff is not gonna come overnight. You need to pay attention to people who need people, places, and things where stuff comes overnight, it may not be God because God doesn't lie. God, listen, he, he said the fruit, fruit grows, fruit grows. <laughs> Amen. The fruit of the spirit. Like you, I, I can remember when I, I went to this particular place and God showed me the heart of this particular person. And I remember I, it was in a dream. I remember waking up and I rebuked it. And I remember literally later on after going through all this different stuff, God said, I, I showed you in the beginning. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even be mad with God because I craved what was there. I wanted a mentor at the time and I got a mentor, but I also got a whole lot of other stuff because I ignored the warnings. Oftentimes God tries to warn us, but he, uh, he will eventually give us what we crave. And that's a dangerous place. <laughs> you don't want to be in that place. Listen, I don't know about you, but I've missed it enough to know I don't want to be in that place. Amen. And so, but there's repentance for us. There, there's healing for us. Amen. If we got wounded in the midst of craving something that we shouldn't have craved in the first place. Amen. There's healing. There's, there, there there's, you know, he, there's a bomb in Gilead. Amen. God loves us with unfailing love. You know, I, I just woke up 
this morning oftentimes when I wake up however I feel that's the the attack of the people and I felt so heavy I felt it was so heavy and I was like God what's the, it was like a longing so many people were feeling like like um like I labor so much for other people when are people gonna help me when is like when when, when am I gonna get my due I just want to encourage you agree with God okay, don't agree with the enemy your due is coming listen the kingdom's a vineyard it will come if you sowed it you will reap it God said I will not be mocked. whatever I will not be mocked Whatever a man sowed, that shall he also reap. So if you've been faithful, if you sown and, and, and you've labored in the kingdom and it doesn't look like anything, you see these people reaping all these fast harvests, listen, be of good cheer. Don't be dismayed. Your harvest is coming and it's going to be authentic. Every fire that you've ever been thrown, thrown into is going to authenticate your anointing. Amen. It's so many people with these fast, quick ministries that don't have an authentic anointing. It's generic. And they pay the price behind closed doors for that. And they're going to pay the price. If they don't come into a place of repentance, they're going to pay the price in eternity. See, right now, this is temporal. Everything we see is temporal. But what we're doing, we're sowing a harvest unto our eternity, our salvation. Only what you do for God is what you can take with you nothing else amen and so I just want to encourage you I want to encourage those because because I because I, I just felt it so heavy that it was just so many people like where is my harvest your harvest is coming just look at your agreements examine yourself come out of agreements that God doesn't agree with amen don't approve things that God doesn't approve that that thing hit me so hard when he said and to those who who approve them so you could because you could read all that and be like okay thank you lord you deliver me i'm not walking to any of this stuff but have you approved them have you approved them see we have people who are close to us who are dear to us that we love and might be doing these things and we're like oh well it's okay no it's not okay they're okay we love them we can support them some of them may be in our houses you understand what i'm saying it's okay to love on them but it's not okay to approve what they do there's deliverance for them there's healing for them, but it, but the approval will never be there, and they should feel that. But the approval, they should feel the love and the support, but they should feel that I won't approve it. If God doesn't approve it, I'm not going to approve it. There's more for your life. That's not the plan that God has for you, and it doesn't make a difference. People always want to stigmatize homosexuality, but it's everything. It's it's evil mindedness. It's evil schemes. It's stealing. It's cheating. It's all of it. All the above, sin, missing the mark. We can't approve. We live in a day and time where we like to just wink an eye at stuff and we just kind of let it slide because that's just kind of like the, the, the normal society. But listen, we have to not be afraid to get thrown into the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We have to not be afraid of rejection because people are going to think we're strange. But I'm telling you, this is a time where demarcation, God is marking his people because his people, the remnant is standing up in this hour. So this is a call to you to stand up up in this hour and stand for what God wants. Where do your agreements lie? Agree with God. Agree with what God has said about you. Some of us, we can't even do what God is calling us to do because of our past. So many people are speaking stuff about our past. And the thing is, we haven't come into agreement with what God is saying about our present. We, we can't drive forward with always looking in the rear view mirror looking back. Amen. And so we have to agree with God in every area. We have to agree with God what he says about us. We have to agree with what God loves, what God hates. Like we, regardless of whatever it is, how, if God said it, we have to come into agreement with it. Amen. He has to be our top loyalty. Our loyalty has to be with him and not over every fivefold minister, over every church over every place and some I feel like in these next days coming I just want to give you a warning God is going to show some people where you've been some people are in cults it's unfortunate it's so unfortunate but it, it is what it is and the sad thing is we it's up to us to try every spirit by the spirit of God amen and it, it's so unfortunate there's so many places if you're in a place and, and and the fivefold minister is not pointing you to Jesus as the shepherd it's a cult bottom line because there's one church one leader that's jesus so many people have gone out from among us first john 2 and 18 they've gone out from among us they know how to do church but they're building tower of babel structures they're building structures to make their own name great and they're not pointing people to jesus people are not walking in freedom people are not walking in healing people are not walking in deliverance they're not being awakened to the call of god they're coming into agreement with wrong things this day and time is coming to an end because the remnant is arising in this hour. So I just want to encourage you, if you are part of the, this is a call to the remnant to come out from among false agreements. Come into agreement with what God loves. Come into agreement with what God hates. What God loves, we love. What God hates, we hate. What God says about us, we agree. Amen. What God doesn't say about us, 
we agree. Our loyalty has to abide with God over everything else. Amen. Amen. So listen, I'm about to log off of Facebook. We're going to be on Zoom. We're going to be um we're going to be doing some reflection. You guys can always Oh, so listen, I just want to offer, I, listen, it, it's so important. One of the things that we always want to make sure we do is just offer salvation. We want to offer rededication. We want to invite you to do that now. Before I log off Facebook, listen, if you don't know where your agreement lies or you find you have some agreements that you know that aren't right and you need help, it all starts with Jesus. It starts with accepting him as your Lord and Savior, believing that he died on the cross for you in your heart and that he was raised on the, and he believing in your heart and he was that he was died on the cross for your sins and he was raised from the dead and confessing him as Lord. We have to remember that salvation as a savior, we receive that free sacrifice. As Lord, we literally die. We become a living sacrifice. And we let him be Lord, ruler over our life. We accept him as Lord and Savior. We invite you to do that, man. We would love for you to inbox us, connect with us. Amen. We, we would love to walk with you, to show you how to, to get in agreement with God. Amen. We, if you, maybe you, you were saved and you are saved, but then you kind of got to the left and to the right. You started taking your own life in your own hand. We invite you to come back. God said he's married to the backslider. He said that he's faithful and just. If you confess your sins, that he will forgive you. Not only forgive you, but he'll cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. Man, we serve a loving God. He loves you with an unfailing love. He's rooting for you. Amen. So we just invite you to do that now. Amen. Listen, if you would like to do that, we, we could. You, we serve a living God. He'll step right in and do it with you right where you're at. You can just confess it with your mouth that you believe him as Lord. You confess it with your mouth. Even make a conscious decision in your mind that you want to rededicate your life to him. He'll step right where you're at. Amen. But you, you're free to welcome to inbox us on Facebook. Amen. Inbox us. Email, email us. We would love to walk with you. Connect with us. Facebook, I'm logging off. We're going to be doing some reflection things on Zoom. You are welcome to join us via Zoom. God bless you, everybody.